Sultan Sapayev from Uzbekistan. I'm experienced andro-urologist. From my professional experience, I treated many patients with erectile dysfunction. So I use it many ways as a guidelines for medication therapy and uh, external devices using like a uh, vacuum therapy and uh, uh, injection. Uh, but I never experienced yet uh, implant surgery, but I, uh, but I have experienced other surgeries in, in penile, but not use it like a non, uh, never experienced this penile prosthesis surgery yet. It's not my case. I'm using my own money and my, my own time to learn these cases. Since I'm a young, I have enough time to learn and improve my surgical skills and knowledge. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a uh, perfect time to learn. I want to start to uh, treat andrological disease, especially erectile dysfunction, which is uh, more in our country. To be honest, I, I have not uh, experience in other countries implants. It's the first time I'm, I'm seeing this uh, uh, implants. Uh, I have only just uh, information from internet, internet videos. That is why maybe uh, I don't have enough. Uh, I cannot uh, find the differences with another country's implant in, implants. But uh, I think this is a this is the best one. So when I started to learn penile prosthetic surgery, I got, I, I tried to find the information from internet. I find some videos from Dr. Uh, Dr. Park, and especially I saw the videos Dr. Parks with Dr. Wilson, who greets a urologist doctor in all of the world. Uh, every urologist know him, and uh, so Dr. Park has a uh, practice several states of America, and uh, he he got a more practice and uh, he create his way his tech surgical technique. Uh, I think it's the best way uh, to learn from him something new way, modern way. I think this inflatable penile prosthetic surgery is the best method when that I ever practiced. Inflatable penile prosthetic surgery is the best method to treat erectile dysfunctions and other external devices or injection or uh, other methods, medications because that takes uh, more time and uh, they, that will give the patient uncomfort than the um, prosthetic surgery. That is why I think this is the best method for treating erectile dysfunction. I want to work on this field and uh, improve this uh, field in my country and uh, start uh, my own surgical operations in my uh, in my country in the near future my goal to open my private clinic in uh, maybe in developed countries around the 10 years uh, before that to go to uh, study abroad uh, several states in the uh, united uh, america and uh, europe and asia as well then uh, after, uh, then around the 10 years come back to my country and open small private clinic in my country and help the patients. In my opinion, uh, the methods who created by Dr. Park, it's not easy for surgeons maybe, but it's uh, comfortable and easy uh, for patients at the same time. We know Dr. Park has a more experience uh, with Dr. Wilson and he has enough knowledge and enough experience he he will do this I'm quite sure his method is perfect I want to learn this method local anesthesia is not only easy it's cheaper than other general or spinal anesthesia and uh, it takes uh, time uh, saving time and uh, it's easy than other uh, other anesthesia. When I saw the first time subcoronal approach, I felt it's difficult to do than socrotal approach. But Dr. Park gave me some information about this approach. It's for important for infection control, 
and uh, it's a beautiful plastic surgery when you, when you will do this in a circumcision, incision way. I think it's a better than scrotal approach. <laughs> 네, 반갑습니다. 네, 반갑습니다. Dr. Mukhtar came to South Korea about, I heard, about a, two years ago to be a fellowship. He's not a fellow, my fellow, but he's a fellow doing the fellowship in the uh, other university in Chuncheon. He came over here with the only one reason why. He wanted to learn hard. He wanted to learn something better for his own people. So I, his enthusiasm to learning, and he's still writing a paper and. Uh, and out of his pocket, he had to come over to my practice to learn uh, the new surgery. He's amazing. Dr. Muktor uh, seems to be a very uh, experienced uh, surgeon because uh, after he came over to the here, he was able to have a lot of you know cases with in his fellowship university hospital. So the way he uh, sees the things are, he has an eagle's eye, uh, very sharp. He pinpoints out. Why do this? Why do you do this, Dr. Park? Or why do you didn't do this, Dr. Park? He asked in the right ways. They both, well, Dr. Muktor has studied, you know, my surgery through my <laughs> video or, or surgical videos and my same live surgeries with the, uh, which I recorded. So he was uh, nailing me down. He gave me a very difficult questions as well. So they can tell you, I, I well, he, I heard that he hadn't done any cases, but still, he was making it very difficult to answer, which means that his understanding toward the surgical process is uh, pretty good. So uh, I think that someday, maybe I should learn from him as well. Good practice should always be based on the scientifically sound and proven ways of how to treat the patient or how we should do the practice. So without the research, and it is really hard to see how we should treat our patients in the best ways. Medicine is keep evolving. We need the you know researches to tell what is right or wrong. Men's sexual health isn't that I would say uh, fully you know a completed a department. Not yet. We still do not know the background of the many of the physiology or the anatomical differences. We still do not know it. So. To tell our patients the right thing and to give patients our right treatment, I think research is a critical point. Second reason why of the you know Wilson Memorial Research Center is important is for its training. I cannot treat every patient. I cannot treat all the patients in the world. Sure, for sure. And in terms of the that kind of concept, Asia is compared to the US or compared to the Europe, we didn't have enough that much of the chances to develop our interest for the men's health clinic. Not even men's health, uh, we always you know, thought about uh, as a life or death conditions like a cancer or oncologists, you usually, you know, they had a lot of researches, but now most of, many of our Asian countries are economically developed, just like us or the Japan or the China, we are developed now. And now they want a happy life. Now men wants, they demand a happier life. So, in terms of that, they need their own physicians. They they need their own surgeons who can treat them, uh, just like I try to like I try to do in my country. There's a other reason why I try to focus on the uh, Wilson Memorial Research Center and the training uh, purposes to make the other patients get well treated, and solidarity. The more we are, the more researches we can do, the better we can help our patients. That's ultimately my goal, because I need a comrade in this fight, I'll say. So, in this war against uh, a man's health, I'll say. So, I wish the Wilson Memorial Center will do in the coming days. Well, just like the many organizations in their first beginning, beginner stages, we try, we strive, I'll say, try our best. Luckily, we have a, a, a lot of, or the surgical cases, we have a lot of you know uh, clinical data, so that's the reason why we are able to write more of the uh, you know uh, launch the research, new researches or clinical studies or other stuffs. But there's no you know in terms of the written paper yet, but it will come this uh, fall and uh, coming conferences. Actually, this coming uh, Taiwanese Urologist Association annual meeting, 
uh, our research center was able to be invited for the live surgery. So I think uh, it's in the start, starting role, I guess, uh, it's pretty doing well. And other than that, in terms of the training, we try to reach out toward those uh, more of the Asian countries or Middle Asia or uh, Russian or uh, Uzbekistan. Those countries we try to reach out. So uh, the more and more the trainees are coming. Luckily, uh, Uzbekistan doctors like uh, enthusiast doctors like uh, Dr. Sardor or Dr. Muktor is came with us and they get trained. I'm so happy with that. So we, in my eyes, we are going to in the right direction. We are not in the fully ripe, ripe stages, but uh, I guess it's now rock and roll started. Uh, during my residency, uh, residency as a urologist, all the patient mainly I was seeing is, uh, you know, uh, life or death situations or I would say critically ill patients, not the quality of life. They were aching because of the pain or because of the cancer or because of many things. So back in the days, I really didn't realize what quality of life care means. Uh, luckily, I was get trained by the Dr. Wilson and I was able to see uh, in the U.S. those happy patients how the surgeon can one's life happy. And throughout my training, I was surprised at how those happy patients make the happy doctors. I want my patient happy, and I want to feel happiness at the same time. That's how it became, why I am living, I'll say, happier life than before. So I want my doctor friends. I want my friends feel happy. I want my patients happy. I want. And me myself cannot be the only one who support the, you know, uh, who make the patients happy. I want the others to join this, you know, parade as well, so that we can make it uh, better. Because uh, not much attention has been done toward the field I'm doing. It's not because that it is not important, but because not many of them know it. Medical uh, technology are evolving, but how where it should be focused on, I believe, and the utilitarian view, I guess, is for the better good of the society, which means that for us, better health, better, uh, I'll say, happiness of our patients. That's why I try to be, uh, be more, say more about in front of the, you know, I want to emphasize more of the quality of life care.